Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. The bin man's coming tomorrow, which means it's time I looked at some more quality models from Lionel. If you saw the video of the last train set I reviewed, you'll probably understand why the name Lionel strikes fear slash amusement into my heart. And that's because it was farcically overpriced, even though I bought it on sale for a massive discount. It looked and sounded awful, and the rolling stock was possibly the worst I've ever seen in a train set ever. Not to mention the fact that the track was dreadful and just didn't work properly either. The problem is, before I reviewed that train set, I'd also purchased a load of Lionel, sorry, Lionel rolling stock, which was reduced massively and I thought they were bargains. Obviously now that I have reviewed that train set, I've got a sense of what the Lionel stuff is like, and now I don't have such high expectations to be pleased with this stuff, and in fact I'm expecting more excrement in model railway form. So. Yes, I've purchased five different pieces of rolling stock from Lionel. The top one is this reindeer wagon, although they're not all Christmas themed, it's only that one that is. And these have an RRP of $21.99, which is about £17.79. And I bought each of these from Trainworld for $11.79, which is £9.70. So we're talking less than £10 each for these brand new items of rolling stock. So on behalf of the entire planet, I want to apologize for what's about to transpire. And I also want to apologize personally, just in case my actions cause the planet to be further damaged should any of these models become buried underneath its surface after the arrival of the inevitable truck on Thursday morning. But for now, we're just going to keep things a bit simpler than that and take a look at five hopefully excellent quality Lionel rolling stock wagons. Okay, let's get started and then let's go and watch something else. Shall we? Shall we? We shall. Right, let's work our way down the stack then and I will reveal each gorgeous wagon as it comes. So this one is, like I say, the reindeer themed one. Happy hooves, it says on the front. I think that's an attempt to be whimsical, but I'm not going to make a comment. Let me show you the end of the box then. So this is reindeer feed covered hopper, big number, metal wheels, metal knuckle couplers, 1954410 for ages 14 to adult. That's right, folks. This Christmas reindeer wagon is not intended for kids. It's meant for adults or 14 year olds. Right, oh yeah, and there's also something great on the back of the box. Every one of these boxes at the bottom says, the colours orange and blue are a registered trademark of Lionel. Yes, that's right, this is the last time you will see either of those colours, more than likely, because Lionel now owns them both. Yeah, I don't think that's quite how trademarking works. Maybe they've trademarked this specific combination of that exact shade of blue and orange, but that's not what they said on the back of the box. Yeah, I'm not sure it's possible to trademark the very colours blue and orange, but uh, we'll see if it crops up anywhere else on earth and then we'll know whether they've successfully done that or not. Anyway, that's just a trifle. Let's have a look inside. Um, if I can, has this been taped up? Oh, for goodness sake. All right, I don't, maybe they were worried someone would try to steal this. I don't know. I suppose maybe if they're ultra flammable, they might be used for fire lighting purposes or something. But other than that, Lionel, I don't think you've got anything to worry about. But maybe, maybe they do. Maybe I'm being horribly unfair. Let's have a look. Right. Let's lift this up. No accessories or... Oh, it's taped down again. Goodness sake. I think the packaging probably costs more than the models at this point. Right, come on then. Let's unleash the reindeer feed. See what this is like. All right, well, it's not that light, actually. And here it is. Now, a lot of people told me in the comments for the train set I looked at that Lionel inherited a lot of the old model power toolings. So I assume that's possibly what a lot of this stuff is. Um, now, I've got to say, this is obviously not a high quality wagon. It's not a high detailed wagon or anything like that. 
But for less than £10, I think this is pretty decent. The finish on it is nice, the decoration is good. The moulded detail is obviously quite dated, but it has come out quite nicely. And it does have metal wheels. Um, oh god, they're awful though. Look at that. Look at the wobble on those. Plastic axles, that's the trouble. Yeah. Real nasty wobble on one of, at least one of those axles. It does have metal couplings, but already I can see that the couplings don't spring back to the centre. They get stuck. Yeah, both of them do the same thing. So it looks kind of half decent. I don't have high hopes for the performance of this. But let's not, let's not linger too long on that because I'm already feeling queasy. Let's move on to the second wagon, which comes in basically the same box. Let me show the end of the box here. It is a Union Pacific wood caboose, metal wheels, metal knuckle couplers. Yep, those are the only features of note and both seem awful if the reindeer van thing is anything to go on. So let's get this thing out. See if we've got more wobbly wheels and sticky couplings on this. I'll be interested to see how many of the wagons that is true for. So let's have a look. Again though, it doesn't seem too bad at the moment for $11 or nine pounds. Okay, so we've got one of the axles coming out. Oh no, two of the axles coming out of position immediately. I'll tell you whether those are wobbly later on when I've actually put them back on the model. So here it is as it looks at the moment. Um, again, um, yeah, very basic, as you're probably not surprised to hear. Decoration and finish, pretty much okay, but nothing much to shout about. Are the couplings still getting stuck? Yep, yeah, that one is. Are the wheels still wobbly? Yes, that one is. And that one is as well. Okay, super impressive. Well done, Lionel. Let's move these axles out of the way. Lovely. Probably work better without wheels. I don't think that's normally how rolling stock works, but with these I wouldn't be surprised. Right, wagon the third. Let me show the end of the box. This one is a USA TC tank car number 10936 with metal wheels and metal knuckle couplers. <sighs> Insert the same joke about neither of them being any good yet again. Let's have a look. Come on, let's find one of these wagons that looks like it actually has functional wheels and couplings, because that is the point of a wagon, after all. It doesn't really have to do much else. Yes, I can already see that the wheels, or at least one of the axles, has come out of this thing too. Excellent. Let's have a look. Get the loose axle off there. <laughs> all right. So here it is. Yeah, I mean, you can just tell that this is an old tooling. Um, the handrails on here look absolutely ridiculous. So I'll show you those up close in just a second. I mean, it's quite a cool looking wagon, I guess. Wheels wobbly. Uh, yeah, not to the same extent as the others. Couplings stuck. Uh, yeah, yeah, those couplings are still stuck. Okay, excellent. This is going to be a lot of fun to run, as are the rest of them. Okay, let's put the axle to one side. Not long now to go, folks. Just two more wagons left to look at. We've got this uh, hideous box van. Let me show the end of the box here. Um, it's a Union Pacific box car, number 355230, with metal wheels and metal knuckle couplers. I've got to say, for less than £10, the complexity in the decoration here looks quite cool. Let's have a look. It looks like all the axles are actually fitted to this model, which is a right bonus, isn't it? Pull it out and have a look. Yeah, it's not a bad looking thing really. Again, I'm, I'm sure the level of detail will be very, very outdated, but you can certainly live with that for less than a tenner, can't you? All right, let's have a look then. Ooh, ooh, yeah. So I can tell straight away that the doors are separately fitted and do they open? Yeah, they do, wow. And there's planking inside. Okay, so this is the best value one so far when you combine that and the quite complex decoration on this, which has been done well. Yeah, the decoration looks absolutely fine. Let's turn our attention underneath. Wobbly wheels. Ooh, no. Oh, these wheels aren't wobbly. Well, a little bit in places. Couplings sticky. Um, well, they are springing. Oh, that one's, no, that one's getting stuck. But yes, this is the best one so far. Utterly mediocre, don't get me wrong, but the best of a bad bunch so far. But there is one more still to look at, and that is this one. Let me show the end of the box. It's a Chessy Two Bay Hopper, big running number, metal wheels, metal knuckle couplers, and apparently Chessy and others are trademarks owned by CXXT, 
Intellectual Properties Corporation and are used with permission. Those poor companies had no idea what they were giving permission for, did they? Right, let's open up this one. Let's see what the wheels and couplings are like. And uh, let's have a look at yet another highly detailed model. Um, again, I, I would say the wheels are still connected to this by the, by the looks of things. Let's double check that. Oh, no, this is, might have already been opened. The tape's not taken on the bottom half and the packaging's damaged as well. Uh, maybe someone was going to steal this and then saw the model and decided not to. I don't blame them. Okay. All right. So again, yeah, the, the weight's not bad on it. I have to say, yeah, it's fairly hefty. I think there's a some sort of metal weight in there. Uh, the wheels are indeed all fitted and yet again, all wobbly. Um, yeah, pretty much all wobbly there. All wobbly. Excellent. Are the couplings sticking? Yeah. Yeah worse than ever okay so there we go five wagons let's bring in the whole asylum shall we here they are spare axles well they're not spare but loose axles as well there we go quite like the reindeer one that's pretty cool and then the caboose which i think was in the worst shape wasn't it so there you have it we are now going to have a very brief close look at these and i warn you well i assure you for purposes of comfort that it will be brief and we're not going to go into too much detail because i'm sure you get the point already and then the bit i'm looking forward to which is also a lie is getting them down onto the track and seeing how they do slash don't perform so it should be a fun day which is another lie oh, very untruthful today let's get started so we'll start off with the reindeer van, which weighs in at 84 grams. And this applies to all of them really, but it's clear the molds slash tools are quite outdated on these things. Yeah, the detail that is here is quite chunky and outdated looking, and there really are no separately fitted parts that I can see. However, it looks as though the tools are at least in good shape. The detail that is here has come out quite nicely and the post-processing on these models is really good. There's no visible flashing. They've been tidied up really nicely. And I actually think the finish on this thing is pretty decent. Yeah, you've got a nice satin finish, almost looks like it's been varnished. And the decoration is simple in that there's just one color used. Yeah, so there's no complexity in terms of color but the printing is absolutely fine. And every letter, every little bit has come out really nicely. So I can't fault that. Very basic level of detail, but it does have the rivets and a few other molded bits and bobs. So while it's not an impressive model compared with some of the ones I look at, I think for less than 10 pounds, can't really go wrong with it. So there you go, that is the Happy Hooves reindeer van. Next up, we've got the Union Pacific Caboose, which weighs in at 69 grams, which would make it a nice gift, I think, one that keeps on giving as well. And the same is pretty much true of this one in that the decoration's decent. There's very little to see here, but yeah, the bodywork seems to have been quite carefully painted and the prints are fine. There's a bit more complexity in this one. There's quite a few separately fitted parts. You've got the little chimney there, the walkways on the top and the veranda detailing seems to be largely separate as well. So for the same price, there's a touch more detail on this one. Although as far as I can tell, there's no interior detail and none of the windows have any glazing or anything. So it's still a very, very basic caboose, but again, not too bad for less than 10 pounds. Here's the tanker then, which is a particularly odd looking wagon, isn't it? And this one weighs in at 93 grams. So it's a pretty heavy one. I think it's most obvious that this is an old tooling because it does have this separately fitted, I, well, I guess I would say handrail around the outside of it. This is a plastic piece and the connectors on it are absolutely gigantic. Although the holes that they fit into in the body are even larger. It looks like one of my early 3D printing projects. Having said that, again, molded detail looks okay if quite dated and chunky. Though the finish is absolutely fine, and again, there's nothing special in the decoration, but it seems to have been applied quite nicely. Although the finish of the sole bar on this one is quite shoddy looking, and I don't know why, but it's very, very wobbly as well, as you can see. Uh, if this one does actually run, it's going to probably be wibbling and wobbling around as it goes. I suppose that will be quite entertaining. But yeah, it doesn't really sit flat on the track. It does kind of lean in one direction, so... I think we're pushing it a bit, even for a tenner here. 
Um, not a very nice piece of rolling stock at all, but um, quite an entertaining one, hopefully. So I'll show you that running in just a second. Next up, we have the Union Pacific van, which is the heaviest of these models at 101 grams. And yeah, I think this is probably my favorite of the lot. That's not to say it's particularly good, of course, but like I said earlier, probably the best of a bad bunch. Decoration, probably the most complex on this. You've got multiple colors in the printing, particularly like this Union Pacific shield, which is particularly well printed. Yet you've also got the silver paint on the top, the back, and also the doors, which as you know, can open up. Very, very coarse detail on all of these parts, of course, and very, very few separately fitted parts, although of course the door is a separate part because it opens up. Besides that though, not much to report. Again, old tooling, etc., etc. And then finally, we have the hopper, which is quite heavy given how kind of slim it looks. 75 grams, so definitely some good weight to it. Again, there's nothing much different about this one. You've got very basic decoration. We're back to just the single color. But again, the application is pretty much okay, I would say. Here's a look at the ends. There's a bit of decoration on the ends this time as well. Although again, this turning wheel and the ladders and such are all just part of the molding and they look quite chunky and coarse into the bargain as well. This one does have an issue in that I've noticed one of the springs is missing from one of the couplings. That is the only spring missing across all of these wagons, but I can't find it anywhere. So whether it popped off since I unboxed it or whether it just wasn't there to begin with, I'm not sure. But obviously that's not great, although at the same time I can still couple everything together hopefully because all of the other couplings are intact. So with that, let's get this calamitous collection of cringy crud onto the track and let's see what the performance is like. I'm sure it's going to be absolutely marvellous. So here is my regrettable test setup for giving these wagons a spin. We've got the wagons lined up on the track, not coupled together yet. I thought I would save that dubious pleasure until I was recording. And then I've got a loco, what else of course, other than the Lionel Berkshire, with the sound very firmly switched off. Before I do try the coupling though, I thought I would do the Gordons Hill rolling test just to see how free rolling each of these wagons was. And the answer is that every single one of them is utterly abysmal in every way. The reindeer are going hungry this year because this one just won't roll at all. I was giving it multiple pushes. It was acting as though it just had the brakes on, not at all free rolling. The caboose, I gave quite a big push with this one, but it still managed to stop itself, which in a way is quite impressive, although not desirable, yet would not roll at all. The tanker, again, would not sustain a roll, giving it plenty of pushes, brakes on, absolutely useless. The box van, I gave quite a push, and this one almost sustained a roll, but it still managed to stop itself before the passenger footbridge. This is the one with the straightest wheels, so I think this is probably the best performing one, but it's still awful. And then the hopper, again, will just would not roll, give it another big push, manage to stop itself again without passing the footbridge. So yeah, I genuinely think this is the worst performing set of wagons I've ever purchased. If I'd just bought one or two and they were bad rolling, I could say maybe I've got a faulty example or two, but every single one of these is as bad as each other which just shows that by design they are awful. Anyway, <laughs> let's try the coupling, folks. I've not sort of straightened up any of the couplings. I've just sort of put them on the track and just left them as they are, as you would if you were putting wagons down onto the track. So let's see how many we've got. Well, we've got loco to the first wagon. So that's one, two, three, four, five couplings to make. How many out of five will be successful? Let's back up the loco and see. Let's go quite steady because I don't want to knock anything off the track. Right, one connection, two connection, three connection, four connection, five connection. Right, so everything is now pressed together. I'm now going to bring the loco forwards and we will see how many coupled. So, loco to wagon, did they couple? Yeah. First wagon to second wagon, the tanker did not couple. So that's one successful coupling, one fail. Hang on, stop the loco. So that's one fail, two fails, three fails, because the brake van's not coupled either. So that is the majority of the couplings not working correctly. So let me now actually intervene and try and straighten some of these up, see how many of them will then work. 
these two look pretty straight already. And so do those. So let's try again now that the couplings have been manually adjusted. Again, shouldn't have to do this. Let's go a bit faster as well, give it a better chance. Okay, forwards. Still got a fail. I think that might be the coupling that's missing its spring. Let's just verify that. Yes, it is. All right, so everything else. Oh no, they've, they've come uncoupled again. Oh, for goodness sake. So, frankly, all right, they're together. It's going to be impressive if I can get a lap out of all of this stuff and it stays coupled together. I think what I might have to do is swap this hopper with the caboose and then put the springless coupling at the back so that that won't cause problems. So I'll do that. Let's get the horrible machine gun loco from Lionel to haul this catastrophe around the track. So the only question that remains is will these wagons stay on the track as I run them? Let's find out. Here we go. Let's have a bit of a... Oh, blimey. Excellent. Forwards we go. About half speed. Let's see. All right. Here we are. First curve. Let's see what happens. The, they're all wobbling, actually. Yeah. Perhaps the tanker less than the rest. The, rail, uh, the reindeer one wobbling quite badly. Caboose seems to have quite a wobble to it. Second radius, absolutely fine. Not a very smooth performance from the loco, but that's obviously the loco's fault, nothing to do with the wagons. So for the time being, they are staying on the track. Um, they don't look very good, they don't look very realistic, obviously because of all of the wobbling. And if you were to buy more of these and perhaps use a less powerful loco without traction tires, I think you would really, really struggle because there is so much drag in each of these wagons that let's say 10 or 15 of these would be more like 30 or 40 of Backman's wagons, which are obviously much, much more free rolling. Right, well, interesting. Let's put these across the points then. Oh, what an idea that is. Let's see how they perform over those. Here we go then, predictions please everybody. If you'd like to pause the video and take a guess what you think is going to happen, feel free. I'm not going to take any guesses, I'm just going to let things unfold and let the wagons speak for themselves. And who knows, there's a chance they will perform perfectly over the points. Do I think everything's still going to be coupled together when they come back over the points again? I doubt it. <laughs> okay, go on then. Let's go. Same sort of speed again. See how we get on. First derailment. So far only derailment. Ah, so it's just the wagon at the back that seemed to come off for the time being, but we're only half done. Let's come forwards. Wagon at the back, the hopper still off. Will it survive? Oh, oh, whole bogey's off the track. Oh, oh dear. Okay, no, just at the last hurdle it came uncoupled and it's also uncoupled the rear van. Let's try again without the hopper and let's just see if the others are going to be okay. I'm actually quite impressed I and mean, it wasn't exactly a good result but most of it stayed on the track which is more than I expected. Yeah, so without that hopper we might even get a clean slate here. Back a bit faster. Yeah, all good I think forwards so unbelievably the performance on points doesn't seem to be too bad it is on the hopper so that's what 20 percent of these wagons won't handle points according to my sample but that's not so bad right let's put the hopper back on and continue their performance testing so there they go and i must say once they are coupled together which is a nightmare and once they are away from open points and such they do seem to run okay and stay on the track, so there's that. Anyway, let's have some ratings for the wagons from Lionel. The level of detail, I think, for me is a two-star because the molded detail is very coarse. Most of the detail is not separately fitted and just part of the molding, but those parts that are separately fitted, like the veranda detailing on the caboose or the handrails on the tanker, are real, real chunky and nasty looking. There's no interior detail where applicable, no glazing where applicable, and in most cases just some very, very basic decoration, although the quality of the decoration is okay. The performance for me is two star. First of all, couplings no good. 
Most of these couplings are unusable, which is obviously not great. You've got wobbly wheels, also very stiff wheels with masses of drag, and you've got issues with them over the points as well. Not all of them, of course, but one of the five wagons I've got cannot get over the points for whatever reason. For the quality, I've given it three star. Yeah, just plastic construction with these. Metal wheels, which is good, but still plastic axles, which I think leads to that wobbly effect on the wheels. Not great in terms of quality, although they are all quite heavy, so they do get a point or two for that. Value for money then, I think the full price of $21.99 is still quite expensive for what you actually get here, cheap as they are. However, the reduced price at Train World of $11.99 is a lot more like it, and even though they're not very good, the price very much reflects that. So overall, I've given it four star. I've got less than 50 pounds worth of model here, which in this day and age is quite good. So slight redemption there on value. Overall then, that is 5.69 out of 10, or a grade of E. Yeah, these are not very good wagons, and even though they are cheap and affordable, I wouldn't really recommend them, unless you really, really have a specific purpose for them, and you don't mind the downsides. Into the logbook we go, and they're not actually the worst wagons I've got. They are quite near the bottom, seventh place, above the EVE model wagons, because they are slightly more functional than those, but below the Backman Dance Hall. Yeah, not something that I can recommend unless you want to buy them as a gift for somebody you really don't like. And on that occasion only, these wagons would be perfect. Well, there you have it then, folks. Thankfully, that is the end of this review. And things went pretty much as I expected them to go based on my experience with that Lionel Army train set, which was pretty much equally as shoddy and worked about as well as these did. And uh, yeah, really the rolling stock in that train set was very stiff as well. Although I don't think the couplings were quite as problematic as they are on these. Uh, so yeah, it's really, it's quite impressive how shoddy these are. It is a shame because there's not that much affordable rolling stock out there. And had these just worked properly, and I don't think it would have cost a lot more to modify these wagons so that they did work properly, then they would have been a good budget option because they don't look too bad, obviously. Yes, they're very dated and basic in the level of detail, but they're produced relatively nicely in terms of the finish. So the simplicity doesn't make them terrible. You know, it would if they were expensive, but they're not. So I could have overlooked that. What is harder to overlook is the terrible, terrible performance. And so even though they are a bargain, I still can't recommend them for that reason. But let me know what you think down in the comments. Have you tried any of these models before? Are they indeed old model power wagons as I thought they were? If so, how have they changed since the model power days, if at all? <laughs> Please do let me know. For now though, thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon for another review. All right, cheers folks, you take care. I'm gonna wait for the bin man, I think.